Yeah. All right. How you doing? All right. You turn the lights off. I might go back. <laughs> <laughs> Not my strength to get in front of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all right there. <laughs> Just me and you, and the camera, and us. <laughs> so Kelly, tell us tell us about yourself, your family. Introduce your family. Okay. Well, I'm Kelly Dew. live in Dublin. My husband of 17 years is up there in the corner, Jim. Um, our middle guy, Malin, is sitting in so he can hear. He's nine. My older fella, Grayson's in the back. He's 12. And then we have a, we had a surprise um, three years ago, Eileen Hope. And she's in the nursery. So, but, um, live in Dublin. I'm originally from Dublin. Jim, however, is from Indiana. And I would not allow him to go back that far north <laughs> with me. So, <laughs> he settled in quite well. Awesome. <laughs> Bringing the Hoosiers down here. <laughs> so, uh, tell us a little bit about when and, and why you guys started checking out North Star. We visited, um, it was actually November 1st of last year. We um, happened to be out and about trick-or-treating in the Highland Park area and approached the uh, famous well, party. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of your, your maiden last name. The Bower Home. Like, yeah, the Bower Home. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, even before I approached, uh, I'm like, something's going on there. And it's not, you know, it's something, it's a ministry or something. It's an outreach. Um, because there's just, it was, it just, it was shining God's light, you know, especially on the night when, you know, God is t typically not celebrated. Um, so, you know, of course we were heading that direction, but um, once we were there, just, you know, the, the gifts and the love and the excitement of um, just sharing who you were, um, it, it really touched my heart because we had been searching for a, a church home and that outreach um, was one of the things that God had put on my heart, you know, before I had left my previous church is you have got to get outside of the four walls of your church and be a church. And, I mean, <laughs> that's your motto. So, <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're visiting tomorrow. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so uh, switching gears, uh, when did you first hear God's story? I was in second grade, and some friends of the family um, had would pick me up on Wednesday night on a in a bus van or a church van, and you know haul me to church. And it was a great um, Wednesday ministry that this church provided youth and childrens, and um, so I got connected through um, these dear friends of the family, and they actually kept taking me and taking me and taking me. Um, so it, it was around, you know, second grade when I first, you know, learned about um, God and Jesus and um, the gospel. Awesome. So <coughs> at what point in your life did, did that story where seeds have been planted since second grade, what, at what point did that become central to your life? Well, it wasn't shortly after, unfortunately, but it, it took a long time. Um, you know, and looking back, I mean, God had pursued me for many years. I did stay active in the church. Um, even began to go Sundays with this friends of family who were just, again, just precious people. Um, and, and after a few years, my mom and my sister had become involved. And so we did go as a, a family. Um, and I was very active in youth and any kind of event. Um, but... You know, I was kind of playing church. Um, as I grew and learned, I, you know, I, I was convicted that my heart needed to be fully surrendered, but I erred on the side of caring more about what the world thought, um, caring more about fitting in. And uh, so I, I ran. I mean, I would, I would play church on Wednesday, Wednesdays and Sundays, but um, there was just, there was no heart commitment. Um, so, you know, approaching graduation, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Was 
in a, I was a rebellious spirit, I would say, but I didn't show that rebellion a lot, if that makes sense. Um, I, you know, because I did what I was supposed to do, because that's what, you know, wanted people to see. But, you know, internally, I, I was a mess because I, I wasn't living the way I knew I should. But again, I wasn't ready for that <laughs> commitment or that surrender. Um, so I decided to uh, join the military to get away, have no, you know, no mom and dad telling me what I can and can't do and probably never come back to this area. Just, you know, an opportunity to still have somebody taking care of me, but still have my freedom to. Um, and, and so I joined the Air Force. Um, had too much freedom. Made many ugly, nasty decisions, choices. I was a train wreck. Um, but in hindsight, you know, could always see that God was, you know, protecting me. Um, I was unworthy of that, but, but he was. <clears throat> so I, I met Jim in the military. And honestly, that was an eye-opening experience. Um, it really was love at first sight. And I knew that God had something more for me than my choices. Um, so... I still didn't make any kind of, you know, spiritual decision at that moment, but I knew things were going to be different. Um, so we had, you know, committed our lives to each other, and I mean, this is over several year period, but um, I had come back home, and he was still in. Uh, I was trying to decide what, what else, you know, what am I doing now? What am I doing now? Um, and had gotten back into church with my mom, and. Uh, God just, I mean, you know, slowly, slowly, <laughs> he was molding and softening my heart. Um, seeds that had been planted when my heart was really rocky and hard um, or being watered. And he was actually opening my eyes to, oh, you know, you learn things when you're young, but I think it's hard to, until you've, you know, maybe hit those rough spots or been in those ugly places where you need God, um, that, you know, your eyes are opened. Um, so anyway, sorry. I uh, had a joy of working with three um, Christian folks when I took a job at Volvo, and they were just precious people. Um, because I really had a, an, a, to hear the word Christian, but to see how someone who called themselves a Christian would treat somebody else or speak to me it kind of turned me off you know how can you say that you're Christ-like and you're not showing that so you know I really struggled with I don't want to be a Christian if that's how they act <laughs> and you know I mean not to and I know now not that's not right but anyway um, these three people just opened my eyes so that's not how Jesus is um, and so again, they were watering seeds that had been planted, and, and it really got me to, to processing. I think there's more to to this Jesus Christian thing than than I've just read about or learned about. <clears throat> and that all, you know, kind of come to full circle when um, I was pregnant with Grayson. It was 2003. Our church um, had just received a new pastor, and he was, you know, a young fellow like, you know, I was young back then. Um, I just, I thought it was neat that there was a young, fresh out of seminary family who were real. They had kids like me. They had struggles like me. They were willing to share those struggles with me. They were so real and vulnerable and open and honest about life and what they'd been through. And I coveted that. I, I thought, well, what do you have that I don't? Like, how, you know, I want that. What is that? Um, and so that, the relationship that they just, they poured into us. I mean, they poured into the church, but they really poured into my family. It was beautiful. It was the first time I had seen Jesus' hands and feet, like, in action. I mean, that I understood what that meant. And it wasn't just something that people, you know, said. I mean, they were living 
models of, of Christ, his love, his sacrifice. And they continue to be. They have, they're, they've just been amazing mentors to me and to my family. And it was, it was, you know, when I knew I'm about to have this child and I'm responsible for not only, you know, my spiritual structure, but his. I mean, that's big stuff. Um, so it, it, it was in 2003 that I really, you know, took that to heart. I, I had asked Jesus into my life and right after we had gotten married, working with those crew of uh, Christian believers, but but asking Jesus to be my Savior then changed to asking him to be Lord of my life when I saw how that looked um, through the Van Steenbergs. Awesome. One more question, I'll cut you loose. <laughs> what, uh, what's one or two things that have changed in your life since that transition? Well, I think a big change um, was you know, Jesus showing me that, well, opening my eyes to see others the way he sees them. Um, I mean, every person has a soul that's going to spend eternity in one place or another. And, I mean, that's heavy stuff. And, if, you know, you can't, it's, you should, it needs to be taken seriously. Um, so every day, you know, we have umpteen opportunities to, either show God's love or not you know and that you don't know what people are going through you don't know their story um, but you can make a difference one way or another um, so he really opened my eyes to to start trusting him to see others the way he wanted me to see them and then more importantly um, to be careful what my eyes saw and what my ears heard I mean the little song that you learn when you're a kid about you know be careful little eyes what you see and here and I mean it's so true you know the things that we feed ourselves visually you know audibly um, affects what comes out um, so it really encouraged me to just make an overhaul in the things that that I considered entertainment or I mean even just you know music is a huge part of my life <coughs> and that had to change you know so that I could be fed with life and truth and that my kids could be fed with life and truth and not, you know, the trash that, that we do get thrown at us. So those are two big ways. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, uh, I, I want to pray for Kelly and her family. And uh, real quick, if, if we could have a couple people just come down forward and we'll just, we'll just lay our hands on Kelly and pray for her and her family and uh, just appreciate her for, for being transparent and uh, vulnerable uh, telling her story this morning.